Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Pand Das, and I'm a senior executive editor at the Lancet Medical Journal. I work closely with Pure Earth and Richard when serving as editor for the Lancet Commission on Pollution over three years ago. The publication was the first comprehensive assessment of the effects on health and the economic costs to society from environmental pollution. By that, we mean air, water and soil worldwide. The top line messages were that in 2015, pollution was responsible for 9 million premature deaths and that 92% of that burden was in low and middle income countries. Furthermore, the report found that the effects of pollution exerts a considerable economic toll, amounting to 4.6 trillion per year in welfare costs. The report received global coverage with nearly 3,000 articles in the first weeks after publication, and according to Plum Metrics, has been cited almost a thousand times. So the report really helped to bring attention to what has been a neglected issue and importantly, provided the evidence that pollution was not only an environmental problem, but a global public health crisis. The Commission also laid out actionable and cost-effective strategies and solutions for policymakers, as well as knowledge gaps and an agenda for future work. In celebrating the contributions and achievements of women, the Commission had many leading women scientists and academics. One notable figure is Professor Federica Pereira, the director of the Columbia Center for Children's Environmental Health. She is internationally recognized for pioneering the field of molecular epidemiology. Her longitudinal cohort studies of pregnant women and their children have demonstrated the harmful links between environmental exposures and disease using molecular biomarkers. Prenatal exposure to toxic chemicals Pesticides and air pollution result in increased risk of preterm birth, low birth weight, asthma, loss of IQ, and behavioral and learning problems that can affect health and productivity over a lifetime. In addition to our scientific understanding, this work provides are the shocking disparities in the health impacts of toxic chemicals, air pollutants, and climate change. Pereira has observed that not only do minority and low-income communities suffer disproportionately high exposures, but stresses due to poverty and racism magnify their effects. The result is a heavy overall burden of disease endured by these communities. As the theme of this year's International Women's Day states, we must choose to challenge. We must choose to challenge these environmental injustices. We know pollution affects everyone, but women really do face heightened risks due to structural and biological factors, including lower wages, lack of decent jobs, motherhood and menstruation, traditional gender roles and cultural norms, which usually mean that women are responsible for cooking, fetching water and cleaning, due to which they end up right next to pollution sources. Pollution in its various forms disproportionately affects women and it is imperative that policies to address pollution must consider gender. A previous Lancet Commission on Women and Health, the key for sustainable health, asserted that women's contribution to society is under-recognised and undervalued, economically, socially, politically and culturally. If society is to flourish, so too must the health and well-being of women. This commission concluded that when women are healthy, valued, enabled and empowered, sustainable development is achievable. It's up to all of us to work towards this goal. I'm really pleased that Pure Earth is using International Women's Day to bring attention to the devastating impacts of pollution on women and children's health.